The next part of our lesson on streams and rivers is stream order and aquatic communities. Precipitation first collects at the top of the watershed. This is in the headwaters, the headwaters of each stream. From there, water flows downhill in tiny trickles. As these trickles, and we also call this runoff, as these trickles begin to combine, they first carve out a small stream channel by erosion. This first small stream channel is called a first order stream. This is a small stream with no tributaries coming into it. First order streams combine to form larger streams called second order streams. These larger second order streams combine to form even bigger third order streams and so on. The Mississippi River's watershed is the largest in the United States and the river is a 10th order stream when it empties into the Gulf of Mexico. The Amazon River in Brazil is the world's largest river because it carries more water into the ocean than any other. It's a 12th order stream when it reaches the Atlantic Ocean. Knowing the odor of a stream and whether it has a perennial or intermittent flow can help you understand what aquatic life it can support. Now let's take a look at an illustration of this. First, and second order streams. In the headwaters of a stream, the water is shallow, stream bottoms often rocky, and there are very few aquatic plants. A lack of food limits the number of animals that can live there. In early order streams, the benthic community of organisms, this is also called the benthos, the benthic community of organisms is a key part of the food web. This includes benthic macroinvertebrates. These are animals such as mussels, aquatic insects, and other invertebrates that are visible without the aid of a microscope, thus the term macroinvertebrate. Because there's little aquatic plant growth in the headwaters, animals at the bottom of the food web depend on the leaves, stems, and animals that may fall into the stream from the land. Aquatic insects, such as stonefly nymphs, chew and tear at these leaves and stems. They, they, they chew and tear them into little bits. These animals are called shredders. Small pieces of plants and stems that aren't eaten by the shredders are eaten by filtering and gathering collectors. Grazers, such as snails, for example, appear ver further downstream as the channel widens. Here sunlight strikes the stream bottom, allowing algae to grow on rocks and on plant stems. Grazers feed on this algae. Productivity increases as you go downstream in the aquatic community. Food becomes more abundant and diverse, and so does the diversity of the entire aquatic community. Most fish that live in headwater streams are small predators such as darters or minnows and these are fish that are able to hum, hug the bottom and keep from being washed downstream. They feed on smaller animals such as aquatic insect nymphs and larvae. Since the fish also eat shredders and collectors, they search for areas where there are lots of these kinds of insects. Next, let's look at third through fifth order streams. These are mid-level streams. They have both rooted and floating aquatic plants and algae. In these larger streams, more types of animals have niches in which to live. Grazers such as snails and water pennies eat a growing number of plants. Collectors increase with the varied plant life. And as plant diversity increases, shredders begin to decrease. A large variety of fish species live in the deeper and more varied mid-level streams. When two streams come together, the waters mix and flow downstream together. The individual characteristics of the streams and the nutrients from each watershed combine and form a still larger stream. Next are the higher order streams. In very large rivers, few rooted plants may grow because the water is too deep and turbid. Here there are more collectors than shredders. One major group of collectors in big rivers 
is mussels living in the river's benthic zone. Fish in very large rivers are also an, an important part of the aquatic food web. Catfish species represent a variety of feeding behaviors, for example. Some species tend toward being scavengers, others omnivores or predators. Other fish, such as suckers, may prey on small mollusks. Predators, such as sunfish, may specialize in eating insects, while others, such as the spotted bass, consume smaller fish. Predators may range in size from tiny zooplankton to the 300-pound alligator gar. Now let me summarize stream order. Stream order determines aquatic communities. A stream's order or size determines the aquatic community it can support. Headwaters, first order, and second order streams have little or no rooted or floating plants, so aquatic animals depend on debris that fall or get washed into the water. These conditions favor shredders and small fish. Third through fifth order streams have both rooted and floated aquatic plants and many more types of animals. In a big river, few rooted plants grow because the water is too deep and turbid to allow sunlight to penetrate. Big river conditions favor plankton, collectors, and large fish. Here are some of the insects that live in the stream bottoms. Aquatic insect nymphs serve many roles in stream ecosystems. They can be seen without the aid of a microscope, but they're very small. They range from about a quarter of an inch to over an inch and a half long. The presence or absence of certain species in various Texas waters are good indicators of water quality. Water quality is our next topic. 